afternoon and happy homecoming week. I hope you've already been participating in the many events that are going on around campus. And trust me, there is still more to come. But first, let's cover our academic segment. Hey guys, my name is Justin Toddy, and today I'm going to be talking with Miss Candace Goat here. She is the coordinator for employment, career employment here at UTM. And we're just going to discuss a little bit about the career fair coming up next week. Ms. Candace, what do you think that the freshmen need to know about this career fair? We're going to set up a table for each college, and under each of those colleges will be the majors. There will be an academic person for the freshmen to talk to. After you're finished talking to the academic person, you can go to the next table or tables and talk to an employer about what, about landing an internship later on, about what they do, about what they're paid, anything you really want to talk to them about. You'll be able to maybe talk about your major and what is in store for you in the future. Some of you haven't picked a major yet, so you'll be able to talk to them and maybe that they select a major by what you've gotten to talk to the different departments and actual employers that will hire interns. They may hire summer hires. So it's just a day to gain some information. Come stay as long as you want. Come. You've got an hour at lunch at least for freshmen, but you can come as long as you want. So it's a really good time to come and if you don't know what your major is, you can kind of figure out your major and look for possible summer internships or jobs in the future. It's kind of, we've kind of built it as a major slash career fair or career fair slash major fair. So yes, they are prepared to talk to freshmen about majors and information about what they do. I, we never had it when I was in school a long time ago, but I think it's a great opportunity. Yes, ma'am. When, uh, what day and time is this taking place? It's October 20th. It's in the University Center. It should be on the bottom floor. Those of you interested in communications will have to go upstairs, but the bottom floor and part of the upstairs floor, and it'll be done by 2. So get there between 10 and 2. All right, thank you, Ms. Candace. I hope you guys learned a lot about the career fair coming up. It's really important you guys stop by. There's a lot of opportunities out there for you. Now, PEP leaders, if you want to discuss a few more of those opportunities with your students, now would be a great time. Last week, we covered a segment about the library, which included an overview of the library, information on circulation, leisure reading, and even electronic databases. But this week, we want to give you more information on the Rogers Media Center. Hey guys, I'm Ashley Grimes and I'm here with Miss Linda Woodrow who is the Library Supervisor of Rogers Media Center and she's going to tell us a little bit more about what all you can purchase and check out here at the Media Center. So Miss Linda, what all can you check out at the Media Center? You can check out DVDs, videos, CDs, and even laptops to use only in the library. Wow, and how long can these laptops last? They last about an hour. Okay, that, so that's enough time to get some studying in. Mm -hmm. And um, I see over here you have a large selection of DVDs. Uh -huh. How long can you have those? Um, you can check out three for three days. Okay, awesome. Um, and you can also purchase things here at the Me Rogers Media Center. Mm -hmm. um, what all can you purchase? Um, we have uh, construction paper, poster boards, um, cardstock, we have some felt. Uh, in fact, we have a list on the wall here of everything that, that we have and the prices. Uh, we have some special paper here that um, uh, is like um, letterheads or something for um, making signs. We have phone board. Wow. Um, notebooks. <laughs> just everything, everything, pretty much, I see. <laughs> awesome. And I see back here we have the LRC. Could you tell me a little bit more about what that is and what all we can do back there? LRC is the Learning Resource Center. Okay. It ha we have Ellison dies to punch out letters and shapes and um, animals and things. And we have the instructional aids and we have some juvenile books and audio tapes. Okay. Uh, we have puppets that can be used for classes. Wow. Uh, okay. For young uh, teachers trying to teach their classes or area educators as well. So here we are in the classrooms at the Rogers Media Center. Um, so tell me, can students rent out these rooms or are they just for classrooms? How do they use these classrooms? Okay, these are for classes only. Students are not allowed to book them. Uh, they are for their classes that will involve uh, film strips fil uh, or uh, videos, um, anything film related for their class. This particular uh, room is room 118 
and holds 56 people. The other one is a smaller room, 120, that holds 24 people. And it has the same equipment for viewing videos. You can also do webcasts in here or attend them. Okay, awesome. So why do students need to come to the Rogers Media Center? Okay, well, to enjoy a multitude of, of uh, items that we have to use, uh, microfilm, microfish, they can view a video or DVD. We do have some on reserve for classes that they have to keep here and we have the setup for them to watch them here. Wow. Uh, they can do their own presentations, um, punch out die cuts of any kind, buy paper, bulletin board materials, and also attend classes here when they're in those classes that come. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Linda, for being with us today, and I hope all of you learned something new about the Rogers Media Center, and I hope you'll come check it out. Well, today seems to be a pretty nice day, but the weather is beginning to change, especially at night. It's starting to get a lot cooler, and with the weather change can come some health risks. So stay tuned for more information on how you can stay healthy during the season change. As you see, you're standing here in front of the Student Health Building here at beautiful UTM. Lovely day. The reason I'm here, you may ask yourself, Justin, it is such a lovely day. Why are you here? You don't look sick at all. You look great. I know. Thank you. The reason I'm here, just left class, guy sitting beside me, sneezed right on my paper. That's why I'm here. Same way it happened to you, I'm probably sure earlier today, walking down the hall, somebody coughed right in your face. That's why you came here. Just anytime you have anything, any kind of health related concern, come see Miss Shannon here and she'll fix you up just like she did me. Um, the weather does not make people sick. A lot of people think that weather makes people sick, but what makes people sick are viruses. And this time of year, there's lots of viruses in the air. So really just giving yourself the tools that your body needs to stay healthy. Lots of sleep, um, lots of good things to eat. Make sure you're eating a sound diet, resting well, and then just staying away from people who are, who are sick. That's really important. And the best thing that you can do is actually wash your hands frequently in case you have come into contact with a virus or something that will make you ill. Okay, the flu shot is the best way to prevent from getting the flu. This is the time of year that you want to take it. It's good for about six months. It coincides with the flu season. Typically on, cam on campus we have a later onset of flu. We see more flu probably in January and February than we do this time of year. But this, you want to go ahead and get the shot now because it takes about two weeks to get immune to the flu after you've had the flu shot. And it is very safe. You cannot get the flu from getting the flu shot. And it is the best way to protect yourself from getting the flu. The flu shots are $20. Um, the only form of payment that we accept for the flu shots this year are the, um, is at the Skyhawk Silver. So you need to make sure you have money on your Skyhawk card on that account. And we are offering the flu shot at various times. Um, we send out an email and post the times on the portal, but usually three or four times a week at set times. If you can't make it during those times, then you can call and we'll make an appointment. With over 100 student organizations on campus, we couldn't possibly cover them all this semester. But this week we want to focus on one specifically, the Collegiate 4-H Club. So stay tuned for more information. Hi, my name is Darnisha and today I'm here with Justin, who is the president of Collegiate 4-H, which is a student organization. So Justin, what is Collegiate 4-H? Collegiate 4-H is an organization for the students on campus to basically just get involved with the community. Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, get together with local and state 4-H agents to help out with uh, community service projects, um, service programs, and uh, judging competitions. And uh, really there is, uh, you do not have to have been involved in 4-H in high school or anything else, and it doesn't matter what your major is, mm -hmm. uh, we welcome all students to join. So Justin, why do you think a freshman should join Collegiate 4-H? Well, today's freshmen are tomorrow's leaders, and Collegiate 4-H is a great leadership opportunity for freshmen as they get to meet people on and off campus uh, at the state and national level as well, and hopefully that by getting freshmen into Collegiate 4-H early, they can start building upon their leadership skills and by the time that they graduate, not only have improved themselves, but also the club as a whole. So Justin, how often do you guys meet? We meet every other week uh, in either room 107 or room 204 of Brim Hall. Uh, we usually meet on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock, unless otherwise noted, but that is the usual meeting time. Okay. 
So freshmen, hopefully today you learned something about Collegiate 4-H. Pep leaders, this is the time now to maybe stop the video and ask your freshmen if they may have any questions about joining this organization. Thank you. If you think the only thing Greeks do all the time is party, then you have it completely wrong. Up next, we have more information on the Greeks' involvement in Habitat for Humanity. Well, what we do at the, at the UTM chapter is we fundraise and raise money to help build the houses that the local Weekly County chapter of Habitat for Humanity does. So we assist them in that. We also assist them in the volunteering on Saturdays. We all go out and we help build. And right now we're helping out with the Fulton chapter also and helping them build on their house. And we also have another house going in Martin and we're about to start breaking ground on the Greek house on October 16th. So we're really excited about that. The Greeks have a huge involvement in the Habitat for Humanity house that's going on this year. Uh, they raised over $20,000 of, over the past three years for the for this house and through that like how they raised the money was that they raised the money through homecoming week and greek week with homecoming they did pyramid admission and with greek week they had uh, step in admission and all that money that was raised went to the habitat for humanity house so and it was it was a lot it's twenty thousand dollars is a lot of money to put towards a house so we're really excited about it and we want to get all the greeks involved and and all the freshmen, if you want to come out, come and help out build the house, and it'll be a lot of fun. Well, that about wraps it up for this week's show. Stay tuned for a list of the remaining events for Homecoming Week. Have a good day.